lock it. So let me get this real quick. This uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 9, verse 18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Hold on, let me bring that one one more time. It's one of my favorite scriptures right here. This Ecclesiasticus chapter 9, verse 18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Okay, so wisdom is better than weapons of war. Okay, if you, but that's why, uh, that's why you can have a little small ass little nigga, and he can have uh, operation over a whole team of, of, of big niggas, all right, a, 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 a squad, a squad of big ass niggas who way bigger than him, all right. His brains always over Trump's strength. Okay, his brains always over Trump's strength. Okay. It says, wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner is more much good. Okay, so wisdom, that's better than weapons of war. Okay? Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Alright? What the hell? What the hell are you gonna do with a gun if you ain't got no wisdom, you dumbass? Alright? Then you pop that gun. Alright, like Project Pat used to say, I know you scrap, but you cowards like to play hard, knowing that you don't wanna catch a murder charge. Nigga, you know, you know you ain't trying to take no damn murder charge, nigga. All right, why the hell you got a gun for? All right, you know your ass is gonna shoot somebody. All right, end up in the slammer uh, for the rest of your life, crying for your uh, for your freak bitch to put some uh, money on your books. Okay, so so you, you you got you got some kind of wisdom, nigga. All right, but a lot of you niggas so stupid, y'all just shoot the gun, don't even think about the consequences. Or right? if you do, you want somebody to feel sorry for your stupid ass. You get slammed up, all right? Maybe you should have been in the streets, okay? You should have been trying to be a damn gang, okay? Young man, now when your ass get in that box, let's see how gangster you are, okay? Uh, this is the key, chapter 9, verse 18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. So wisdom is better than uh, weapons of war, okay? You're not scared. No damn weapons of war. Why? Because we got wisdom. All right. Wisdom is way better than weapons of war. Okay? It, it, it tells you that wisdom should not dwell into a malicious soul. Alright, so these niggas with malicious ass intentions, they don't have wisdom. Okay? Wisdom is the best gift you can have. Okay? Why? Because wisdom will keep your ass from getting destroyed. Okay? Wisdom will keep your ass from, uh, from being in some shit. Alright? Let me start up. This back in Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 16. It says, Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Hold on, so wisdom is better than strength, okay? You could be a damn uh, a, a superman, okay? You could be a, a big strong man, okay? It say wisdom is better than strength, okay? I don't care how big your muscles is, how big and strong you is, how much you will bust a gun, okay? Wisdom is better than strength, okay? It says, Then said I, and this coming from the wisest man that ever lived on the earth. This King Solomon speaks, okay? And then ain't nobody on ever lived on earth was ever more wise than King Solomon, all right? It says, Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. <laughs> Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. We out here on the street corners, they see a poor man, poor, I'm considered as a poor man, okay? So the poor man wisdom is not heard. That's why niggas just ride, ride right past. Or you say something, they get offended, all right? Why? Because the poor man's wisdom is not heard, okay? But let a uh, Jay-Z or Kodak Black tell one of these stupid niggas something. They want to listen, all right? This uh, Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 9, verse 16. Then said I, 
Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man wisdom, poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. They're not heard. All right. The poor man wisdom now. Who wanna listen to the poor man? Okay? Man, what this nigga talking about? He ain't talking about nothing. Alright? The poor man's wisdom is not heard. Okay? It says, the words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Oh my goodness. Alright? But that's hey, that's that's fire. Hold on. Let me read that one more time. Let's run that back. This Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 17. The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. So the, the wise man word is heard more than quiet, all right? It's heard more than quiet, like this being considered in quiet because ain't nobody listening, all right? Ain't nobody listening. So this, this is considered being quiet. This is heard more than the cry of fools, all right? A nigga got uh, a whole bunch of followers, a big ass congregation, but he a damn fool, all right? That, that ain't being heard, okay? But the wise man, his words being heard more. All right, why? Because wisdom, wisdom is not in a house or a temple or a holy house. All right, a wisdom is not with a malicious soul. Okay, so wisdom not everywhere. Okay? You can only get wisdom from an exclusive place. Okay, and where is wisdom at? Yahweh Shem Al Shai, the Most High, He placed wisdom upon His men, upon His prophets. All right, the wi wisdom comes from the Heavenly Father. It don't come. You can't gain wisdom by going to school and getting a damn degree. All right. Let's go, let's get this. This is Job chapter 12, verse 16. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. So with who is is uh is, is strength and wisdom? With the heavenly father, that's where strength and wisdom from. You can't get strength and wisdom from nowhere else. Alright? You can't get strength and wisdom from nowhere else. Alright. It says, with him. It's strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. So if you are deceived, okay, if you are the deceived into believing that you are wise, okay, then you deceive the heavenly father deceives your ass, okay? Why? Because he's not gonna let you have wisdom, okay? Let me get this real quick. Because I can I keep quoting it. The scripture keep popping, popping in my mind. Alright. Let's let's bring it out. This wisdom. Of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4 for unto into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter okay so into a malicious soul wisdom is not gonna enter okay so if you wicked okay if you wicked you're not gonna have wisdom all right and two-thirds of you so-called Negroes Latinos and native Indians y'all are wicked all right so wisdom don't dwell with you all right it says, it's like, for into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So, if your body is subject unto sin, okay, wisdom is not going to dwell in your soul, all right? Wisdom not going to dwell with you, all right? Verse 5, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee the seat. Oh man. Ooh wee. But so you can't be deceived if you got wisdom. All right. Most of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians out here are deceived into thinking wisdom is somewhere it's not, or to thinking that they got wisdom. All right. It says, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee the seat and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Oh my goodness, bro. These scriptures, bro. I love these scriptures, bro. I, I love these scriptures, bro. This this is life, man. All right? This that living water, bro. Oh, let's get that real quick. Sometimes you be reading, you know, and you be like, man, you, you catch your own self. Like, what? This word powerful, bro. This, this uh, St. John... Uh, 
This St. John, chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth upon me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. All right. So these scriptures is that living water. Okay. These scriptures are, 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 are the real drink, are, are the real water. Okay. This this the uh this this the real uh this is what really replenishes you. Okay. This is what really re replenishes you. Okay. This this live these scriptures. Okay. That's how you get life breathed into you. Okay. This Saint John chapter seven, verse thirty eight. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Woo. That living water, what's that living water? That's the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures, okay? That's because these scriptures are considered unto food and water, okay? So let's jump back here. This wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee the sea. So the Holy Spirit teaches you discipline, okay? The whole, if you got the Holy Spirit dealing with you, then you'll be disciplined and not doing wickedness, okay? You'll be disciplined and mortifying your members, okay? You'll be disciplined and, and, and following the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Shem Shah, okay? It says, For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. All right, so if you got uh, the Holy Spirit of discipline uh, dwelling in you, okay, you're not going to abide when, when uh, um, unrighteousness cometh in, okay? That's right. Hold on. Let's get this. Let's get this real quick. It's 1 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians. What's the lock Second Corinthians. This second Corinthians chapter six. This second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? So fellowship don't have uh, righteousness don't have fellowship with unrighteousness. All right. If you got the Holy Spirit of a coffee dice dwelling in you, you're not going to be able to hang around uh, nothing unrighteous. You're not going to be able to stand nothing unrighteous. Okay? Why? Because you got the Holy Spirit of discipline in you. All right? So, so when you see wickedness, you address it. All right? Why? Because it's adverse to your spirit. All right? It's adverse to your spirit. All right? This second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? Alright, so you're supposed to be unequally yoked, okay? You a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. Okay? If you got the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you're supposed to be uh doing things that are wicked, hanging around wickedness. All right, being in darkness, all right? If you got the Holy Spirit on you, okay, you're not going to do wicked things, all right? If you got the Holy Spirit on you, you're not going to be shaving your beard off. You're not going to be eating pork chops, okay? You're not going to be smoking blunts, okay? Smoking cigarettes, okay? You're not going to be uh, committing adultery, okay? All right, serving false idols, okay? Doing things that don't benefit you, okay? You're not going to be doing those things if you got the Holy Spirit of discipline on you. Why? Because... Unrighteousness, uh, the Holy Spirit of, de uh, uh, of righteousness, of discipline, will not abide when unrighteousness come in. All right, and righteousness and unrighteousness don't have no fellowship together. Okay. It says, "Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness?" So light don't have no communion with darkness, man. All right. You can't mix, you can't mix and mingle, all right? No man can serve two masters, okay? You can't be lukewarm. You can't be straddling the fence, okay? And you can't, uh, and, and if you got the spirit of righteousness on you, you're not going to do wickedness, all right? 
and you're not going you're not going to stand for wickedness either okay if you got the holy spirit of discipline on you okay you're not going to just stand by and and, and, and and watch wickedness go on and be okay with it all right it says This is Rock chapter 13, verse 6, 16. All flesh can sort of according to time, and a man will cleave to his life. All right. So a man will cleave to his life. That's why I say uh, birds of a feather flock together. All right. You know, two peas in a pot. All right. If you wicked, you're going to be hanging with wicked people. If you wicked, you're going to be doing wicked things, okay? If you are righteous, you're going to be dwelling in unrighteousness, all right? If you in darkness, you're going to like to be in the dark, okay? It says, what fellowship have the wolf with the lamb? So the sinner with the, with the God. All right, so what fellowship have the, the wolf with the lamb? All right, the wolf, that's, that's a, a lamb is prey unto the wolf. So why the hell the wolf? Gonna be hanging with a lamb, all right? That don't make no damn sense, all right? It says, what fellowship have the wolf with the lamb? So the sinner with the godly, all right? So what? what is what is a godly person gonna be doing dwelling with sin or dwelling or hanging around the sinner, okay? If you godly, okay? That's, that's, that's adverse, okay? That's a perverse, that's perverse, all right? It says, what agreement is there between the hyena and the dog, and what peace between the rich and the poor, okay? So what agreement does the a hyena have with the dog, okay? What agreement does righteousness have with unrighteousness? It ain't no agreement, all right? It ain't no agreement. Let's get this. This Matthew chapter six, Verse 24, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. So you can't serve two masters, man. Or you can't serve wickedness and righteousness, man. All right, you switch sides. You'll get your ass killed for doing that in this world. You can't, you can't sit, you can't claim the crypts and the blood, okay? You can't, you can't be set tripping, okay? It's safe. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. So it's either you're going to pick one, or you're going to either ride with one, or you're going or, or to ride with the other. All right? You can't, you can't play both sides, man. All right? It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold, he will hold to the one and despise the other. They cannot serve Yahweh and Mammy. All right, so you can't serve Yahweh by Shema Shah and Mammy. Okay, you can't, you can't, you can't do that, man. All right, to tell you that the Most High is a jealous God. All right, you think the Most High is okay with you serving dumb idols? All right, and being involved in wickedness, but saying you love Him? All right, you crazy as hell. All right, that's why the Most High he gonna kill two thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. All right. Cause you think you can do what the hell you want to do, all right? It's Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah. And can't nobody tell you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, man. Y'all hard-headed, all right? Rebellious and stiff-necked, all right? Don't want to listen to nothing, all right? Know-it-alls, okay? So if you know it all, just know your destruction coming, all right? It's Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life. All right, so death shall be chosen rather than life, okay? That, and that's what our people have chosen. They've chosen wickedness over uh, over the Most High, His only begotten Son, okay? They completely committed themselves to wickedness rather than serving the Most High and His only begotten Son, okay? 
you chosen death over life. It tell you all those that hate me love death. All right? So you love death, okay? You want to be involved in, in, in wickedness, okay? The, the most I gonna kill you, all right? This is Jeremiah chapter eight, verse three. And death shall be chosen rather than life. And these people that chose death rather than life, all right? You got the man of the Lord on the four, throughout the four corners of the earth, on the highways and the byways, week in and week out. And do these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians give a damn, all right? This life right here, this that living water right here, okay? They, they, they want to remain in the congregation of the dead, okay? Because if you don't understand, if, if you don't have the Holy Spirit of your how about Shema, Shab by Shema, that's abiding on you, you are in the congregation of the dead, okay? Let's get this real quick. Just, let's get this real quick. I'm going to jump back. This uh, St. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickened them. All right, and that word quickened them mean to make alive. So it's the spirit that makes you alive. All right, you're not alive just because you're walking around out here and your heart pumping. And you got a pulse. All right. The St. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickened them. The flesh profit of nothing. So the flesh don't profit you nothing. All right. The spirit profits you everything. All right. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. All right. So the words that Yahweh, uh, our Lord, Yahweh Shah spoke unto us. All right, that came from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, all right, the doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah Bashim which his prophets are proclaiming on the street corners, okay? This is uh, this is what makes you alive, okay? This is what gives you life, okay? Otherwise, you're in the congregation of the dead, all right? You're just a zombie. You're, a, you're the walking dead. It's back in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. And this was the Heavenly Father speaking to uh, you so-called Negroes, okay? But you can apply this to all Israel, all right? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, the Heavenly Father called you an evil family, all right? An evil family, all right? Evil means bad, all right? Because these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, they are evil as hell, all right? They don't, they, these people don't care about Yahweh Shimon Shah. All right? They don't care about Yahweh Shimon Shah. It says, And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places where I have driven them, said the Lord Yahweh Shimon Shah. So, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Shimon Shah. So, they'll let you know that Yahweh Shimon Shah has scattered us all throughout the earth. Okay? You got Israel's, Israelites everywhere, all right, looking like all type of nations, okay? But that's how pissed off, like I was going into earlier, that's how pissed off the Heavenly Father was with us. That he scattered us all throughout the globe, okay? That's how pissed off the Heavenly Father it was with us, all right? He took us from the east, we're from the east, we're from Jerusalem, all right? We all the way on the western hemisphere, okay? That's how pissed off the Heavenly Father was with us. He put us on the whole other side of the globe. All right. Let's go here. This Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. It says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Oh, man. So if you wander out of the way of understanding, Okay, you reject the words of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Okay, you reject the scriptures. Okay, you reject life. Okay, then guess what? You're gonna be dead. All right, and that's why you got nothing but spiritually dead people walking around out here in America. All right, why? Because they wanted out of the way of understanding. All right, these people don't know what the hell going on out here. All right, these people don't. Only thing they know about is Stephen Curry jump shot. Okay, the NFL draft. Okay, and uh, and Barack Obama. All right. Let's get this. It's in Isaiah chapter 60. It's Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, is risen upon thee. All right, so it says, arise and shine. All right, because this word also is considered to light. All right, because this world is fully, fully dark. All right, the darkness being compared 
being parabolic unto uh, wickedness. All right, and sin is evil. Okay, so this word is the only thing that's light. All right, this is the only thing that you can get light from. Okay, it says, "Arise, shine, for thy light is come." So you're supposed to arise. What you're supposed to arise from? Wake out of that dead state. All right, how do you arise and wake out of that dead state by taking heed to the understanding? To the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scripture. All right. It says, And the glory of the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So darkness has covered the earth. All right. There's nothing but wickedness going on all, all throughout the whole earth. All right. Especially here in America. All right. This is ground zero for wickedness. All right. Homosexuality, bestiality, pedophilia. Okay, the list goes on. All right, the list goes on. All right. It says, "For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord that have I seen outside shall rise upon thee, and His glory shall be seen upon thee." All right, and that's what's happening right now. Okay, you can see the glory of the heavenly Father. Okay, you got young men. Okay, they can be doing anything on a Saturday. Okay, but they come out on the street corner and reading out the scripture to you. Alright, that's the Heavenly Father, man. Alright, that's the glory of the Heavenly Father. But do these people think like that? They don't think like that. Alright, they don't think like that. Why? Because they cover in gross darkness. They're in a dead state. They want to out of the way of understanding. They don't want to receive the knowledge. Okay, so they're going to stay dead. Alright. Let's go here. Revelation chapter 11. I'm gonna start at 8. Like I brought this out earlier, but I'm gonna bring it out here. So it's good. This Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So their bodies, okay, their dead bodies, okay. A spiritually dead body to lie in the street, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. This is the spiritual Sodom and Egypt. I already went into that earlier. I already went into that earlier. This is the place where most bodies, because each means bodies. This is why it's the most incarcerated people throughout the whole world here in America. Right? And this is ground zero for homosexuals out here. Right? Why? Because this is Sodom. Right? It says, verse 9. And they of the people, the kindreds, and tongues, and nations, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in grave. I mean, that's a comparison because all these nations have took crafty counsel with the so-called white man to keep us in this dead state, all right? To keep us in this dead state to where we don't know what the hell going on, all right? So this that's them not suffering our bodies to be put in grave, okay? That's why it's just nothing but walking dead going on around here. All right, nothing but zombies, okay? It says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall sing gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. All right, and that's what's going on right now. All right. They, they were busting over us being in this dead state. All these uh, heathen nations, um, starting from the so-called white men, okay, they were busting over us being in the state that we in. All right, they sent gifts to, to, to one another, okay. They 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 were busting at, at our downfall, okay. Like uh, like in Psalms that I brought out earlier, okay. They said raise it, raise it to the foundation thereof, okay. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them. All right, three days and a half being a 350-year period, okay? From roughly, uh, I can't, uh, seven, seven, the late 1700s or early 1800s, I believe. All right, to the time period of 1969 and 1970, okay? When Elijah the prophet and the reincarnation came back, which was Alba Bibbins. Okay, Abba Bibbins, 
who brought this truth back to the forefront, okay? That, that was the spirit of the Heavenly Father entering into us, okay? And we remember who we are. We remember that we are the descendants of the Most High, the children of Yahweh Sinai Shah, okay? And after three days in the half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them when saw them. Yeah, and that's what happened. The so-called white man, he got great fear right now, okay? Because you see, we're waking up to who we are, okay? We're waking up to who we are, okay? We know we're not just niggas, all right, thugs, trappers, game bangers, okay, porch monkeys, and all these other five words that they call us, all right? We are actually the children of the Most High, okay? We are actually, uh, we, are, we, we have actually received uh, the inheritance of the Heavenly Father, okay? And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven, and they cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Woo wee! Lord, hey man, Lord, well, I can tell you how about sitting down with All right, Lord, Lord, willing I could be one of those men. I pray, man. I pray so hard, bro. All right, I pray so hard. Man, this Revelation chapter 11. Verse 12, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto him, unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Okay? That's what's gonna happen. Okay? We're gonna get beamed up by them chariots. Okay? Lord willing we those men. Alright, the lake gonna get beamed up by them chariots. Okay? The lake gonna get beamed up. Alright? In front of the face of all our enemies. Alright? All you so-called Negroes, you know, the native kids who don't want to get down with the program, okay? You're going to let get left to get destroyed here in the shores of America, and the elect don't get beamed up on them chariots, okay? Because you want to play around, all right? At the same hour was a great earthquake, and that's going into that nuclear destruction, okay? Hey, because 200 million ICBM nuclear missiles are coming over here to the shores of America, and it says the earth shall shake too to real to and fro, okay? So it's gonna be a great earthquake for the nuclear missiles to take down, okay? And the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was, and the earthquake was playing a man 7,000. 7,000 just means the complete number, okay? Because the most side, he gonna, he, gonna, he gonna do a lot of slaughtering out here, okay? Those who, who don't get beamed up on that cloud, on that chariot, all right, you're gonna die here in America, okay? It says, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to Yahweh, the God of heaven. Yeah, so even the elect who get beamed up on them chariots, they're gonna be spooked, bro, all right? Cause it's gonna be, it's gonna get real hot out here, man. All right, it's gonna get real hot out here. Let's get this Habakkuk real quick. I'm gonna jump back to Revelation. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 1 a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet of Sh Shiganah oh Lord you how about Shimei was shot I have heard thy speech and was afraid all right so the prophets the man of the Lord when they hear the words of you how about Shimei was shot they get scared as these people are to do all right but they don't they don't get scared when they hear the words of you how about Shimei was shot all right they don't get afraid all right they don't pump no fear in me, all right? The, the, the only thing that pump fear in these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, Indians is death, okay? Nipsey Hussle gets shot five times. Oh, Lord, why this had to happen, you know? Oh, he didn't deserve it. Oh, man, this is scary, man. Now, now you want to get scared when the drama pop out, all right? You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians are a joke, all right? This Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Oh Lord, Yahabashim Yahushai, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Yeah, I was afraid. Alright. So when you hear the speech of Yahabashim Yahushai, which he speaks through his prophets, alright, the men that's on the highways and the byways, okay, proclaiming the names of Yahabashim Yahushai and the proper doctrine and faith and sincerity, okay, 
when you when you when you hear those words, these are actually the words coming uh, directly from the heavenly Father. Are these words directly coming from the heavenly Father? So this is the speech of the heavenly Father. Okay, let me just prove it real quick. Just so you don't think I'm just out here talking. All right, I'm gonna jump back. This Luke chapter 1 verse 70 as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet all right so the heavenly father speaks by the mouth of his holy prophets okay which have been since the world began so the prophets ain't went nowhere all right the prophets are still here to this day the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets and that's how the most high speak to the people Okay, he speak through his prophets. All right. So let's go back here to Habakkuk 3. It's Habakkuk 3, verse 2. O oh Lord, Yahabashim al Shah, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, Yahabashim al Shah, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in, in wrath, remember mercy. All right, so that's how the Heavenly Father is going to uh, make, make himself known through wrath. Okay. And that's. That's what the man of the Lord we cry out for. All right, we cry out for the Heavenly Father to bring judgment down on this place. All right, because this, this place is begging for judgment. This place is begging for destruction, okay? This place needs to be destroyed, all right? That's the only way that we can receive the kingdom of heaven, all right? And Yahweh, way Yahweh Shah can receive that glory, okay? And that's what we dwell for, all right? That's what we hope for, so like. This Luke, I'm gonna treat, treat it one more time. I'm going to read it one more time. This Luke, chapter 1, verse 7. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So, we established that the Most High speaks by his prophets. Okay? Back in uh, Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. I'm going to just start back from 2. This Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2. O Lord, Yahabashim, I have heard thy speech. So, this is the speech of the Heavenly Father. Okay? And was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known and wrath. Remember mercy. All right, so the Heavenly Father, it say that the Heavenly Father is known by his judgments which he executed. All right, so the, these people don't know the Heavenly Father. Well, the Heavenly Father is going to make his make, 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 make himself known, all right, when, when he judge your ass. All right. This uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. O oh Lord, Yahweh Shimei Shah, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, Yahweh Shimei Shah, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known and wrath. Remember mercy. All right, remember mercy. Okay, remember mercy for who? Remember the uh, mercy for the elect. All right, for the house of David. Lord, please. All right, and, and, and bring wrath on everybody else. Okay. It says Yahweh came from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Paran, Salah, His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. Yeah, because our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, His chariot, which is a so-called UFO, is considered unto a mountain. Okay, so it, it said that it stretched from one end to the earth to the other end of the earth. All right, so that chariot that our Lord Yahweh Shah gonna come on is gonna be huge, man. It's gonna cover the whole sky. It's like an Independence Day when that big ass chariot came. All right. That's how the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, going to come on his chariot, okay? It says, and the earth was full of his praise. Yeah, because your ass going to bow down then. <laughs> you going to bow down then. And, and, and guess what? If you're not slave to salvation, you're going to get destroyed, all right? Verse 4, and his brightness was as the light, and he had horns coming out of his head. And the horns that's coming out of his hands is talking about them laser beams that's gonna come from the chariot. Okay? That's 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 the horns that's gonna come out of his hand. Alright. And there was the hiding of his power. Before him with with the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. Woo! So uh like I said, Jeremiah the 15th chapter. Alright. 
A lot of people gonna die from famine, pestilence, wild beasts, all right? Ultimately, the ultimate plague, which is them ICBM nuclear missiles, all right? They say the coals went before his feet, okay? I keep going. Verse six, he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the, the nations. And they're going to, uh, they're going to uh, Isaiah the 14th chapter. All right, breaking the staff of the, uh, and the scepter of the rulers. All right, breaking the staff of the wicked. All right, Jeremiah the 51st chapter, I believe. How is the hammer of the earth broken asunder? Okay, Revelation the 19th chapter. All right, uh, he, he, he had many crowns, okay? Because that's his semblance to our, to, the, to our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, destroying all these nations, all right, and uh, receiving his glory, okay? It says, and the everlasting mountains were scattered, the everlasting mountains being the governing structure of the beast and the whore, all right, the NATO and the EU, okay? The, the, the rulership of Esau, Edom, okay? The perpetual hills did bow, his ways are everlasting, I saw the tents of Kassan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. <laughs> Talking about no Kushites and them uh, so-called uh, Africans, them Hamites. All right. I, I believe that's Kassan. It's like verse 8 in, in Midian. If I'm not mistaken, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure on that. Verse 8. Was the Lord, Yahweh by Sima outside, displeased against the rivers? So was the most high displeased against the rivers just letting you know what kind of smoke the heavenly father bringing down here man all right he gonna bring drama on the rivers all right what the hell the river do the river ain't do nothing all right was thine anger against the rivers was thy wrath against the sea was thy wrath against the sea so that's letting you know you how about you now so you gonna bring some real drama down here man all right the wrath of the lord gonna be serious okay that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation. Thy bow was made quite naked. Oh my goodness. According to the oaths of the tribes, even thy words lie. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. Damn. Hey, how about she now? Say he gonna break dry. It's gonna be uh, tsunamis going on out here. Hurricanes going on out here. Earthquakes going on out here. Uh, tornadoes, cyclones, okay? It's gonna be, bro, it's gonna get real vicious out here, bro. When our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach make his second coming. The mountains saw thee and they trembled. Yeah, because it tell you that the mountains uh, quake at the presence of Yahweh Bashi Mashiach. All right, so the mountains, they, they gonna be quaking, okay? Woo! It says, and they trembled, the overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. Man, the deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. Okay? The but ocean's gonna be the, the water gonna be coming up from the deep. Okay? Can you imagine that, bro? All right. It said the mountains saw thee and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation, and at the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the ICBM nuclear missiles. That's that glittering spear. Okay, because if you could compare a muscle, I mean a missile, it's like it. It's, it's compared unto a, a, a spear, okay? And that fire that, 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 that shoots the uh, spear off, okay? That's what makes it glitter, okay? It says, Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst stretch the heathen in anger, all right? So, the Heavenly Father gonna stretch all these heathens out here, all right? And two thirds of our people, Two thirds of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, y'all are considered unto heathen. Okay? Why? Because you don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Sinel Shah. Okay? So you're going you gonna to get caught up in this destruction that's coming. All right? Let's get this to Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 34. 
verse 1. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear. All right, so come near ye nations. All right, all these nations need to hear about this. All right, the Heavenly Father got a controversy with you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, and all you heathen nations. Okay, let's get this real quick. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, and how about you know, shine, they children of Israel. So the Heavenly Father telling you to hear the word of the Lord. All right, hear the word of the Lord, they, they children of Israel. Okay, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to bring the hammer down on two thirds of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. All right, so you should be listening up and see what you need to do to get right so you don't get caught up in this uh, destruction. Okay. This is Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord, Yahweh Shema Rashad, have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Alright, so the Heavenly Father, he got a controversy with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. Okay? He got a beef with you, he got a quarrel with you. Okay? He got a problem with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. Okay? And you don't want you don't want to be on the bad side of the Heavenly Father, okay? You don't want to be on the bad side of the Heavenly Father, okay? It says... It says, Hear the word of the Lord, Yehobah Shemel Shai, ye children of Israel. For the Lord, Yehobah Shemel Shai, have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh in the land. All right, so the Heavenly Father, he got a controversy with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. All right, why do we got a controversy? Because there's no truth out here. There's no mercy out here. No, nor knowledge of Yahweh in the land. Okay? So there's no knowledge out here. There's no mercy out here. There's no, everything is completely is unjust out here. Everything is completely wicked out here. All right, so that's why the Heavenly Father got um, a, a quarrel with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. Are you acting like the heathen? Okay? It says by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out in blood, touch of blood. blood. Alright, so that's, you, you, you put iniquity on top of iniquity. Are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, man? Alright, that's all you about is iniquity. Alright, committing iniquity. Okay? So that's why the Heavenly Father got a controversy with you, okay? So let's go back here to Isaiah 34. It's Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. All right, so hearken means to take heed to. All right, so not only do you need to listen, all right, but you need to take heed to the words that's being spoken. All right, why? Because the Heavenly Father is going to bring that drama, okay? He's going to bring that drama, all right? It said, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world, and all the things that come forth of it. And all the things that come forth of it, like For the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shah, is upon all nations. So the indignation of the Heavenly Father is upon all nations. Indignation meaning righteous anger. All right, so the Heavenly Father has a, uh, a, a great reason to be angry with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, and all you heathen nations. All right, he got a great, he got a, a, a righteous reason to bring all this uh, destruction that he's going to bring, okay? For the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh Shema shines upon all nations. And like I said, you don't want to be on the bad side of the Heavenly Father, man. All right, 
You don't want the Heavenly Father to do something to you, man. All right. The one you call God, he's not cool like that, bro. Like, he, he cool, but he don't play no games, man. All right. He a very austere power, man. He will kill you, man. All right. He will put your children to death. He'll put you to death. He'll put a woman to death. All right. The Heavenly Father not playing out here. All right. It says, for the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shah, is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their army, and his fury is upon all their army, okay? So, all these nations can, uh, all these nations can get their army together, okay? Which they gonna try to do? Uh, I think it speak about that in 2 Ezra, the 13th chapter. They gonna all try to come together and fight our Lord, Yahweh Shem Mashiach. They can do that, but they will still not win, all right? You're not winning, okay? He have utterly destroyed them. Well, I tell you they're gonna destroy all these armies, okay? The Heavenly Father gonna destroy everybody who is an adversary, okay? He have delivered them to the slaughter. The slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. So it's gonna, man, it's gonna be dead bodies everywhere out here, bro. There's gonna be dead bodies everywhere out here. I ain't never even seen no dead bodies, so I can't even imagine, okay? There's gonna be dead bodies everywhere, okay? Just all in the streets, okay? This is the day of the Lord, okay? You might just see a baby uh, floating up the, uh, the creek, the side of the gutter, okay? Just puddled with blood, okay? There's gonna be puddles of blood out here flowing like, like, uh, like rainwater, okay? On the side, sides of the streets, okay? might see a baby just floating in. All right. It says, their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. All right, man, it's gonna be real stink out here, man. All right, real stink out here. All right, I think uh, Terry Hilton, she was speaking about a vision that she had of the day of the Lord. And she said that she, uh, she said in the vision, in her dream, she could smell the smell, it was so thick and harsh and red. She was like, she'll never forget that smell, okay? Because that's the smell that's going to be out here in the earth, all right? It's going to be dead bodies everywhere. Right, can you imagine that? It's going to be stinky, bro. All right, then it's going to be everybody out here not taking no showers. It's going to be real raw out here, bro. It's going to be real raw out here, all right? It says, their slain also should be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Oh my goodness, bro. Damn, bro. The Hapa Sin outside is gonna destroy these people out here, bro. All right? The Hapa Sin outside is gonna be a massacre out here, bro. All right? A mass slaughter, all right? It says, verse four, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. All right. How about sitting outside? It's going to eliminate everybody. Uh, well, uh, all the hosts, the, the ones who hosted uh, rulership is the elite. All right. They're the top elite. All right. They're going to they be dissolved. And everyone that's under these elite, all these so called white people, all these heathen nations, and everybody that's joined up to them, like you speak about it, Isaiah the 13th chapter. All right. It says, And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And that's talking about that mushroom cloud that's gonna come up, okay? When the nuclear missiles touch down and then smoke hit, all right? It's gonna it's gonna roll up as a, as a, a scroll, okay? From, from the nuclear destruction that Yahweh Shem is gonna bring, all right? And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf fall of, off the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree, and that's a falling fig from the fig tree, okay? That's nothing, man, look, a little fig falling off the tree, that's that's in comparison on how you have about Shina outside the Most High, he gonna do this place, and his only God son gonna do this place, all right? They gonna make an easy, a speedy riddance of this place, all right? Real quick, all right? It says, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven, all right? So the sword of the Lord gonna be bathed in heaven, in heaven, all right? And this ain't talking about no, no mythical war that's gonna go on in the spiritual world, okay? It's talking about right here in America, okay? Right here in America, right here in this current world, okay? 
it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. And Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom, which Edom, Idumia is you so-called white people. Right? And the chief place of you so-called white people is here in America. Okay? The Heavenly Father gonna bring that drum on you. Alright? It says, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. All right, because the Heavenly Father got people reserved uh, on, on ice to get judged. All right, that's why some of these people in America, they just walking around just waiting for the Heavenly Father to put their ass down, okay? The, the Heavenly Father got a appointed time to put you to death, okay? He got a appointed time to put you to death, all right? So you're just living your life waiting to die, all right? You were just put here and, and, and get, and to get destroyed. Let me get this real quick in Second Ezra. In Second Ezra, chapter nine, verse twenty-two. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. All right, so it's the multitude of people that's on here on this earth. All right, who was born in vain? Are right, you was born for nothing, okay? You just was here, you just here to die, okay? That, and that's, that's ice cold, but the, the heavenly father is ice cold, bro, all right? He just created you just to bring judgment on you, all right? The majority of these people here in America, okay, they just waiting on death, okay? Like that. I finished reading that. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 22. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. So it's a multitude of people who are here who are walking here on the earth right, who was born in vain. Alright? That's the people who are, who are cursed to his judgment. Alright? Let's talk about all you heathen nations. All you heathen nations gonna die. Every single one of these heathens gonna die. And two-thirds of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, okay, y'all are comparison to heathen. And you're gonna die too. All right. It says, and let my grape be kept and my plant. For with, with great labor have I made it perfect. Oh, see I'll be talking about the house of David. Who else, who else could that be talking about? All right, the lit. Okay. So let's go back here. It's back in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 5. For my sword, sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. All right, so it's going to come, up, uh, come down upon Idumia, all right? Uh, speaking about uh, you so-called white people, all right? And speaking about America, all right? The Heavenly Father going to bring his sword down on you, all right? Which is, what's the sword of the Heavenly Father? It's Asibiam Nukul and Mithra, all right? And he's going to bring down his uh, sword Esau on Esau. And he's gonna bring down Esau on the so called Negroes and Tinos and Native Indians. Alright? The Heavenly Father ain't playing with you guys out here, man. Alright? It's Isaiah chapter 34, verse 6. The sword of the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, is filled with blood. Woo! Bro, man, bro. It is made fat with fatness. Oh man, man, the heavenly father is going, bro. He going to slaughter, he going, bro, he going to slaughter all these wicked people out here, man. All right, he going to slice and dice through wickedness, including all, especially you wicked people, okay? The heavenly father is going to uh, reap, reap that harvest or that sickle, okay? He going to pull that sickle out, all right? That sickle going to come out with a whole bunch of uh, food on it. Fruit of fat is on it for destruction. All right. It says, and with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the blood of lambs and goats. All right. And him and the father consider. Uh, you got you got lambs out here. Okay. You got goats out here. Talking about you so-called Israelites and you all you need in the nation. Are the heavenly father gonna kill two thirds of his own people? All right. What the hell you don't understand about this? All right. And with the fat of kidneys of, of rams, for the Lord Yahweh Shimon Shah have a sacrifice in Bosnia. 
and Basra is America, okay? Basra was the chief capital in, uh, in Edom, all right, Mount Seir, all right? So, Basra is the chief capital, is the chief capital of the world, all right? America, all right? America is the chief place of these, uh, so where these so-called white people dwell at, okay? And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. It's the land of Idumia. Idumia. All right. The Heavenly Father got a great slaughter out here, man. All right. A great slaughter is coming to the shores of America. All right. And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. And the heavenly father gonna be so many dead bodies out here, man. All right, ain't gonna make no damn sick. All right, it's up, man. It's gonna be so many dead bodies out here, bro. All right, they say the dust gonna be made fit with fat. All right, we are made up of dust, so the heavenly father gonna have nothing but dust out here, just fat, fat, thick ass dust. That's in comparison to all you people gonna be put to death. All right, it says, for it is the day of the Lord Yahweh Simeon Shah's vengeance. So the time is now, all right? The time is now, all right? Ain't no more time to play around, all right? The Heavenly Father, he's gonna start slaughtering motherfuckers, all right? He's gonna start slaughtering people out here, all right? Ain't no more time to play, okay? For it's the day of the Lord, you have I seen outside his vengeance, and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. Yeah, for the controversy of Zion, what we read in uh, Hosea the fourth chapter, all right? Yeah, how about she now say I got a controversy with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians? All right, that's why you're going to get down to death with the heathen. You're going to get put to death here on the shores of America, right with the so-called white man and all these other heathen nations. All right? I'll read down a little bit more. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, Hey, this is the destruction that's coming to America, bro. All right. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. All right, so it's letting you know that this land here in America is going to be he hell. All right. Then that's letting you know that it's not a magical place under our feet that's hell. Okay. Hell going to be here in America. Okay. And hell is here in America. It's going to actually turn into a physical hell, though. All right. This is hell here in America, bro. Yeah, how about you say gonna actually turn it to fire and brimstone out here? All right? There's gonna be dragons and sapphires and dopeful creatures dwelling here in America. Okay? Verse 10, it shall, it shall not be quenched day nor night. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste, and none shall pass through it forever and ever. Man, you have our shit now shot, and so many words gonna fuck this place up, man. All right, America's gonna be destroyed by ICBM nuclear destruction, okay? Famine, death, wild beasts, okay? Pestilence, okay? That's all you got to look forward to if you're in the shores of America and you're not on the side of your how about shit now shot, okay? All you got to look forward to is death, all right? Verse 10, it shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke that runs shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. All right? So none shall pass through it forever and ever. All right? It's going to be a, a, a perpetual desert out here. All right? A, a, a perpetual uh, a waste. All right? It says, with the... Corm cormorant and the bitter bittern shall possess it the owl and up uh, and the raven shall dwell in it and it shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness damn right. damn bro hey america got this hard shit coming through, all right and if you here in america you should be you should be shaking in your damn boots all right It's Isaiah 
chapter 63, verse 1. Who is that that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? All right, so this is the prophet Isaiah asking the question. All right, like, bro, who, who, who is that? Who is that that's coming from Edom? Because he's seeing a vision. All right, who is that that's coming from Edom with dyed garments? All right, what, dyed garments being a semblance to how much killing the heavenly, uh, our Lord Yahweh Shah is going to do when he come over here to Adumi. All right, to America, okay? It's going to be a lot of destruction out here, okay? It says, it's lucky. 